Forrest Lucas is the innovative man behind the number one line of problem-solving oil and fuel additives on the market. And the visionary's name dons the home of the Indianapolis Colts. But this auto industry heavyweight came from dirt poor beginnings in the rural outskirts of Indiana. And he had to work tirelessly from a young age for his family's survival. How this self-made man formulated his idea and built his business from the ground up, using his expertise as a long haul trucker and seasoned mechanic to invent a product that can extend the life of vehicles longer than anyone thought possible. This is The Rural Americans. of Forrest Lucas began outside of Brownstown, Indiana on February 25, 1942. It was a time when rural Midwestern families were working to recover from deep poverty in the aftermath of the Great Depression. And for this young farm kid with a gentle smile, the plight of the working poor was evident at a young age. A lot of poor families around. Most of us boys went to school barefoot until about October. And then I'd get a pair of cheap shoes, and that was the pair of shoes I got. And if I was really lucky, I might get a pair of sneakers or something, you know, in the spring. If I was at my mama's house, she would do something like that. Otherwise, I'd one pair of shoes last me for the year. But I was really more concerned about my sisters then, because they really were worried about not being as well taken care of as everybody else. We didn't tell anybody about Dad. Or mom, we just got by. Being the oldest of four children and the only boy meant that Forrest played a critical role in providing for the family's livelihood. And he began taking on grown up tasks and long work days on his grandfather's fourth generation farm before he even started grade school. I had to milk the cow in the morning, bring the milk home. My sister would put it in a container, we would put, put it in a well to keep it cold, and then we'd go to school and I'd come back home and I would have to cut the wood and uh, do, take care of the chickens and uh, milk the cow again. One thing about where we live in the summertime, it was beautiful, spring and fall was beautiful. Winters was what was really, really hard on us, especially having to do all the farm work in those short days. And it's so cold, had wood stoves, the wood stoves, you know, you have to be firing them all the time. First, you got to cut the wood, which I had to do the wood cutting. Once I got it past a certain size, seven years old there on, I cut all the wood. As a child, growing up in the rural backwoods of southern Indiana was all Forrest knew. But as he aged into adolescence and socioeconomic classes were brought into focus, he gained a clear understanding that city living was much different than life in the country. Uh, rural deprivation means you're not going to get any of the stuff you, fun stuff you'd have in town, you know, which is true. That's true. The kids in town didn't have to do the things I did. I had cousins. They just lived normal lives. Dad made the money. Mom made the money. They just lived normal lives. I had a cousin my age come out to the farm. He didn't work. He wouldn't work at all. In fact, if I had a chance, I'd go out and play with him if I could. He taught me how to swim in a little creek. <laughs> well, Dad was over logging, you know, and I got my butt chewed out because I wasn't over there with him. But anyhow, it was, uh, I learned how to swim. <laughs> Forrest's mother, Lexi Marie, a firm yet loving woman, did everything she could to put her family first. And she lived with a persistent motivation to strive to do more for her children. What was important for your mom to pass down to you? What were some of the values that she wanted to make sure that she instilled in you as you were growing up? I don't know if she had a particular program or not. She was uh, doing everything right, but she was having to work by herself most of the time, uh, at least a big part of the time. But, uh, got worse as time went on. But she, uh, she wanted us to do right. 
do right. Do not lie, do not do anything wrong. Do everything right. So we all did think everything right. For his father, Raymond Lucas was a good-natured man who loved his family deeply. But there was a perpetual battle for his attention in the Lucas household, and the bottle often reigned supreme. He was a, a really good guy, smart guy. Unfortunately, back in those days, there was no television, but there's also lots and lots and lots of bars. Every little town is full of bars. That's where the guys went to have fun, talking with each other, having a few beers, and most of them would go home. Unfortunately, Dad couldn't do that. Once he got started, he had to keep going, and that was a downfall. Did it keep him from holding a steady job? Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't keep a, a good job because everybody knew that he's going to get to drinking and screw up. So he did all hard stuff, logging, did a lot of logging, which I helped him with a lot of that, you know. So, and uh, farming, whatever he had to do, just, just rough work, you know. Once in a while, he'd find a job. As Forrest and his sisters grew, their father's job prospects became bleaker, and he continued to move the family from place to place in search of permanent employment. They eventually settled in Columbus, Indiana, where true financial destitution set in. Remember Sunday afternoons when we lived at that place? I remember killing off the last chicken because we couldn't feed it and we didn't have anything else to eat. It was unnecessary that we went through some of the hardships we went through because my dad had a drinking problem. There's an alcoholic that drinks all the time, and then there is a person who binges on alcohol. And there's an on and off thing, but it, it, we shouldn't have had, had it as bad as we did. That was the worst part. I think Forrest's greatest resentment was the effect that it had on my mom. Always the effect that it had on my mom. And the way she should have been treated and was not. How much did you want to help her? You had a real purpose to help your mom. We were a team. She and I were a team. And uh, we knew we had to get by with what we had somehow. We never really complained a lot, each of us did. We just teamed up and did what we had to do. Do you ever get any fist fights with your dad? When I was 15, he came home drunk. Got up the next morning, he wanted to get in his car and take off. Well, he'd been letting me use the car when he'd come home drunk, because he'd always be about out of gas, and I'd always fill it up and leave it full of gas. So he never said anything. I'd take, have it for a couple of days sometime. And, uh, this one morning he wanted to, he wanted to take off. I had to fill the gas and going to go somewhere myself. And he started giving me giving me a bad time and he threatened to hit me. And I said, "You you do that, and I will knock the whatever out of you." And uh, he backed away from me and muttered something and went back in the house. And my sister was there where he was going to he was going to. That's what it's going to do. He's going to beat the hell out of her or something or other. And uh, so we talked about it. You know, it was, a, it was a change in life because we we're not going to be afraid of dad anymore. It changed him too. I think it was, he didn't try it anymore. So, to my knowledge. I want to ask about the pneumonia story because there's, there's a chance that you wouldn't even be here today. One time, I remember it because mom put me in bed with her. This was like in the winter time, where I didn't have good clothes, good shoes, nothing like that. School, we had to walk to school, which is over a mile away. Walk to school, walk back home, and go out and do all those, take care of the cattle and everything. So I caught it there. They got electricity while, a year or two before that. And Dad stopped by there and got some ice cream bars. You know, the bars, flat 
cars with chocolate on them. And I was laying there out. And uh, he laid that on my forehead and had one for the girls too, one for mom, I hope. But that woke me up and I saw it and I hadn't had an ice cream in a long time. So I ate that whole thing and just felt so good. Felt so good to toward dad. And uh, anyhow. Next, on The Rural Americans, Forrest Lucas breaks the cycle of poverty in his family and invents a product that would catapult him to a position of great power and influence. But the road to success would require thousands of highway miles. By the time he was 17, Forrest Lucas had taken a wife and soon they were raising their first child together. To stay out of debt, he hauled gravel by day and worked at a muffler factory by night. As he strived for economic independence and to be his own boss, a career notorious for having a great starting salary and the liberation of the open road caught his eye. When did you start to get an interest in truck driving? I was always fascinated by semis going down the road. Back then, to get a truck driving job like that, you had to really, you had to work several years in a, in a warehouse first before you got to be laid up where you'd be a driver. The only ones could actually have their own truck would be their independence. When Forrest turned 21 and reached the legal drinking age, he scraped together just enough money for a down payment on his first semi-truck. After witnessing the damaging effects of his father's battle with alcoholism, he knew he couldn't afford to jeopardize his own future. So he immersed himself in his work and signed on with Mayflower Moving Company as a long haul trucker. People were moving all over the country all the time. Main factories, they changed their personnel to the top every three years. And the government was changing soldiers about every year they would get moved. So we were constantly, when I started working with Mayflower, uh, doing that all the time. I learned a lot there. I learned a lot there. When he started hauling, the average price of gas was around 30 cents per gallon, and Forrest limped on thin margins, often sleeping in his rig to maximize his dollars for his next capital investment. With just five hours of sleep a night after covering thousands of miles, over time, Forrest was able to save up enough to build his very own fleet of trucks. By the late 70s, Forrest's trucking business was booming. And as his fleet of trucks expanded, so did his family. But driving away from his five children for over a month at a time with just two days off at home was a steep price to pay. And soon, it took its toll. There's nothing in the world outside of somebody dying as driving away from your children, knowing you're not going to see them for a long time. That was, that was the worst part of all. The very worst part of it all. That was really hard. That was really hard. But I intended to only do it for two or three years. And then I would have enough money saved up I should be able to buy a gas station or something. Or have my own job, be my own boss. That's what my intentions were. Uh, however, uh, my wife spent the money as fast as I could make it, and I never got to do that. So I kept on trucking. And then eventually started buying more trucks. And eventually had to get rid of her. I got to have my, uh, my real teenagehood when I got single there for a few years. <laughs> I had quite a life for, for a while. And then I met my, my beautiful wife. And uh, I knew it was time to start getting my life back together for my kids. In the early 80s, Forrest found love at first sight when he laid eyes on a vivacious redhead. Only Charlotte had spotted him long before the two ever connected. I remember going to a, an event out at the high school there in town um, with a friend of mine. And Vivian and I were sitting way off to the side and there was something said about good looking guys or something. And our, anyway, I said, well, look over there on that front row the guy with the real dark hair and the mustache, he said, yeah, and I said, now I would like that. 
Well, I was a hairdresser in another life. And he was a truck driver in another life. I worked fairly long hours. And his then girlfriend actually brought him down to my beauty shop to get a haircut. Do you remember that day? I do. And I remember that uh, I'd seen her before, a few months before, and I saw her, and I thought, well, that's the most beautiful girl I've ever saw in my life. I never thought I'd ever see her again. And when I did, there she was. <laughs> going to cut my hair. I made the plan to come back and talk to her. They married in 1982 and welcomed son Morgan. It didn't take long for the Lucas newlyweds to discover that they were not only compatible in marriage, but also in business. He's the idea guy. I was the pencil pusher. But we worked together a lot. That was one of my first Peterbilt trucks. We got them all painted up like that. <laughs> well, they're all different, actually. There are no two trucks alike in the whole fleet. But that was a, that was a real nice truck. Peterbilt's is a big deal, having Peterbilt. Most of what we have, because our drivers love driving them and being seen in them, because they're all really pretty. Yeah, they are. So, that's, uh, and that's me with a pretty blue shirt on there that I <laughs> probably still have, <laughs> to tell you the truth. But uh, yeah, I, I never wear anything out. And yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's a big deal. Beginning of a, beginning of a big bunch of trucks. You ever see the kids when you're driving by giving you this one? Mm -hmm. did, you, did you respectfully Absolutely. respond? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm Absolutely. so glad you're here because I was one of those kids. Are all your trucks Peterbilt? No, but most of them are. Okay. The drivers like to drive a Peterbilt. I feel like this is, this is a classic truck. Most owner-operators guys like to have Peterbilts. But they are good trucks. How long does it take to unload a full trailer? Well, it's according to where you're at. You know, if you go to a nice warehouse like this where they got plenty of help, you can unload it in a, in a matter of minutes. But sometime you might be a, a while waiting. That's one of the worst. Waiting in line can be a big problem. A lot of waiting in truck driving. A lot yeah, of hurry up and wait. Yeah, there's still some waiting. <laughs> yeah. Waiting to get loaded. Waiting to get unloaded. It's pretty. How much does a truck like this cost? Nowadays, I think the last things we bought new were uh, about one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Now they're probably about two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, get a nice truck like this. What is this dog right here? I see it on the side of a lot of these trucks. I've always wondered. That's the Great Dane. That's the brand name of these trailers. Okay. All of our trailers are get Great Danes. They're like the best there is. It costs a little bit heavier, but quality-wise, they're better than anybody else. This is what a truck looks like inside. <laughs> now, how does this differ from what you had as a setup when you first started driving a diesel truck. What looks different here on the dash? It's got a few more gauges. <laughs> you know, cross over a little bit and you see what a dash looks like. I would love like. to. Yeah. You gotta be a smart guy to be a trucker. You can't be a dummy. You gotta be pretty smart and you gotta have a lot of personality otherwise nobody's gonna want you. And you gotta be able to be smart. But see all the gauges? These are all important. You get totally charge of everything. Anyhow, and uh, Air horn. Look at that. Did you used to have, didn't you used to have to like actually pull a horn yeah. from up above? Oh, so that hasn't changed. I love it. Can I that try it? hasn't changed. Go ahead. Okay. I've always wanted to do this my whole life. Woo! Okay. That's, we crossed that off the bucket list. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the Rural Americans, necessity is the mother of invention. How Forrest's fleet of trucks helped shed light on a revolutionary method for avoiding costly mechanical failures leading to a stroke of brilliance that would help millions of people extend the lives of their vehicles. After spending 20 years in the trucking business, Forrest Lucas evolved into an expert mechanic with the ability to overhaul engines. And he did it just to keep his trucks moving down the highway. As expensive mechanical failures continued to cost him time and money, he started searching for a solution, a way to get more miles out of an old engine. There were a lot of breakdowns, a lot of electrical problems, the trucks road rough, and they just weren't designed for, for living very long. Those deserts will, will eat up a truck. So I went 
playing around with additives, trying to find something that would make the oil stand up to the temperatures and end up making my own stuff. After foraging through an oil junkyard in Southern California, Forrest started working in his garage, blending different additive mixtures and experimenting with them on his own fleet of trucks. And the Lucas Oil Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer was born. He knew he struck gold with the perfect blend when his new mixture would help trucks stop burning through oil, cool gearboxes, and even pick up more miles to the gallon. I found something here, I got stuff in here that nobody else in the oil world has ever found out. They don't know that it that even exists. The trucks were having a problem going coast to coast across those mountains and deserts and everything. So this stopped all my problem. I put uh, some of them in the fuel and I made a fuel treatment and it went from four and a half up to five miles to a gallon. And the exhaust pipe up there where it used to be smoke all went away. So it was burning it. And that's why I raised, got more fuel miles out of it. So let's still have it. We're still in every truck stop in the country, you know, because of that. That's why we started out with selling to truck stops. So this was a marketing tool. How did, how did you use this? Well, this was our first salesman. Everybody loved these things because it didn't cost them anything. We gave it to them. If they bought some oil, we put it on, made a display of oil, we would give them this. And this is the sign of salesman. So you put it in line, the guys are walking in line down through here, got a whatever in his pocket in his hand, and he sees this, you know, and somebody's over there fooling with it all the time, and once, it didn't take it too long for everybody to realize it, but you see how much the oil comes up and down this side, and how noisy this one is, but there's no oil coming up, that's got the oil stabilizer in it. That's what makes this thing work. It's the extra additives we got in there that nobody else has. Now what's happening here? So is the friction being reduced or? Total friction, all gone. Wow. You know, you can put this in there and nothing ever touches each other. As long as nothing touches each other, there's no wear. That's right. So if it sits there for a year and you come back and start it up again, it'll be lubricated. You don't have to worry about it. So when so. the truck drivers would come up to like a Flying J and they'd see this display, what would this mean to them when they were able to do the experiment? What, what would that tell them? A lot of the people knew I used to be a truck driver. Yeah. You know, so that was a big deal, I think, the fact that they, they're helping me out, and I, you could believe me, I made sure that everything I said was always true. I made the labels up, I wrote up all this stuff, all that stuff, designed it all. Wow. And, and this is a, I did not realize at the time I had a talent for this that other people don't have. But uh, it's all, it all worked. It's beautiful. You came up with the branding on your own, everything, yeah. the colors? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Let me see here. Whoa, what a difference. Yeah. And when that warms up, that'll be still a little heavier than this, but it's so much slicker, it more than makes up the difference. Wow. Makes it real, real slick. I, that's amazing. And especially someone who, who is a mechanic or a diesel mm -hmm. engine, someone who works on diesel engines, which is not easy. They would probably see this and think, I could probably get more miles out of my vehicle if I use this product. Yes, that's what happened. And after a few of them did, and especially if somebody's lost oil pressure, you got oil pressure gauge in all your trucks. So it starts wearing, oil pressure starts going down. So you put this in there and oil pressure comes back up. <laughs> Holy cow, wow. you're getting it fixed. And then when you come time to oil, change oil and you find out your oil's still good, then you got it. It's worth paying the money, you're saving money. And then after a few of these guys hit a million miles, which is unheard of back before this, you know, then the, the, the word just kept rather spreading. Wow. Meantime, we were off in the other parts of the industry. And you know what it's like. I mean, if you're driving a big rig through Arizona in the middle of July and it's 115 degrees and you break down and have to fix it, you know how hard that oh, is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hard to get across that desert with the oil starts thinning up. And if you're driving it yourself, you kind of take care of you back down you level off and drop a gear or something but if you got some driver on it what the hell he just goes for it you know uh in many cases we're still making the things we were still, i told you how many of them we make every month and sent us the auto parts a lot of people they wear it out somebody steals or whatever you call up and they want another one can you send me another demonstrator it is still your number one salesman probably. Uh, yeah it probably is <laughs> After a few tough years in the beginning, as Forrest and Charlotte transitioned from Lucas Lines to Lucas Oil, eventually the heavy-duty oil stabilizer took off. As diesel truck owner-operators, those who knew their vehicles best 
spread the word about its tremendous benefits over the CB radio. And then they get a conversation going on it, and next thing you know, the other guy's trying it. We were at a trade show one time, Louisville, Kentucky, Fair and Exposition Center. We had a big 20 by 20 end cap on for our booth that year. And there was people going up and down the aisles, and all of a sudden there was, you could hear this guy going, where is he, where is he, where is he? And all of a sudden he's in the middle of our booth going, where is he? Where, I heard Forrest Lucas was here, where's he at? That's him over there. He's, I gotta see him, I gotta see him. He's God. What are you talking about? Oh man, his products are so good. It's done this, it's done that. You know, well, he took off. And then here comes this lady running right behind him. It was this man's wife. You know, and it's like I'm standing there, okay, I live with God now. <laughs> oh, didn't need that. <laughs> How am I going to get his head through the door anymore? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> she was a little sour about it. But, you know. <laughs> Come on, he's a man, you know. But that's the way that things kind of happened. If somebody tried it and it really worked for him the way we said it was going to. We've had no telling how many thousands of letters and phone calls, you know, telling us about how good stuff is. And it, it's just, it's totally amazing. But it's fun too, you know, whenever you can help save somebody a lot of money with, say, transmission fix. Okay, that's a product that you look at the bottle and, okay, but if you have trouble with your transmission, you might try that $12.95 bottle versus a $3,000 transmission. So, you know, and lots of people have done that. We could never have done anything with just me. It had to be she and me. And I couldn't have had anybody as good a partner as she has been. Besides being my lover, she has never asked for anything. She never complained about anything. If we had to miss a meal, we missed a meal. No, she never said anything. I didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. Today, Lucas Oil offers more than 250 unique products, including stabilizers, fuel treatments, octane boosters, greases, lubricants, and motor oils manufacturing products here in America and selling them to the world. Now, now we sell a lot in Mexico, believe it or not. Lots, and there's a lot of bad equipment down there and it's expensive. So everything you have down there is expensive. The cars are expensive, the oil is expensive when you get it down there and the oil and fuel is not very good. So what we got can really fix our stuff for them. I love that. And you know what else I love is that you, you employ a lot of people who send money back home to Mexico to support their families. You're exactly right. Exactly right. To get the word out about his revolutionary product, Forrest established an aggressive marketing campaign that crossed into the worlds of auto and boat racing, as well as Western sports and even network television. MAV TV. Motorsports Network. If it has an engine, it's on MAV TV. Catch all the action from the mudslinging Lucas Oil short course off road races. The excitement of the Lucas Oil late model dirt series. Thousands of horsepower pulling tons of steel. And for all the gearheads and tech junkies, MAV TV's award winning lineup of automotive build shows feature the best in custom car building and new product showcases. But the biggest boon to his brand name happened in 2006 when Lucas Oil secured the naming rights from the Indianapolis Colts, a deal worth $122 million over 20 years. Right now, we're doing a little thing now with the Dallas Cowboys as well as the Colts. Both the big things with the Colts, of course. I wish they were doing a little better than they are. But, uh, you yeah. know. They were when we started, when we made the deal. <laughs> How's that? You glad you made that deal? We'll see. It's, it's still got a lot of life to it. Yeah. Still got a long ways to go. The business grew a lot in here. How's that? That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm happy about that. Now here's a pretty shot of the back of it. Next, on the Rural Americans, Forrest Lucas pays his success forward opening up his home, considered by many to be the most magnificent residential estate in Indiana, to raise money for charity and the community, and how he stays true to his rural roots through a number of causes. In order to 
drink? Hang on. Refrigerator, ice, what do you have? Wine? Booze? We got it all. The rise of Forrest Lucas, who came from impoverished beginnings and went on to build an oil additives empire, is a real life rags to riches tale. And he's remained true to his home state, making significant investments in Indiana including the naming rights to the home of the Indianapolis Colts. His company's name is on one of the NFL's newest stadiums. His company's products on store shelves worldwide. And now Forrest Lucas, along with his wife Charlotte, are new homeowners. And the 33-acre Lucas Estate, a French country manor home fit for a member of the aristocracy, complete with an indoor basketball court and a billiards room that Forrest knows how to use. <laughs> When the people built this, they had all the money in the world they wanted to spend. So they went way over the head what anybody normally would, would do. You know what's great is that you don't, you don't hoard this all to yourself. You share it with the community. Right. Why is that so important to you? Well, I can do this and other people cannot. You know, but I think everybody should get a chance to see some of this if they can. Maybe they can't see it personally, but if they can see it on your television show. That's great, you know. But this is something that Every American should be proud of the fact that we have this in America. We've used it a lot for uh, charity events. The hospitals, all the major hospitals have used it. Forrest and Miss Charlotte have been gracious enough to open up their house every time for Riley Children's. Randy Bernard introduced us and uh, said, get ready, because this guy's gonna be the sweetest, nicest guy you ever met. And uh, sure enough, he was right. And they do, they just open up their home for people who are trying to make a difference in kids' lives. And, they can't have enough of those, and trust me, we don't have enough of them. They're very rare. Here we are, and this is one of my favorite pictures. This house is not just a house. It's a piece of art. It's a big, beautiful piece of art that should be shared with everybody else. It should not be set up here with just one family living in it and not letting other people in the community come and see it. And that's what we've done. I think opening up this, this property and knowing your story, just being able to see something like this is inspirational to kids, especially across rural America, wouldn't you say? I would say so, and it should be, it should be. They can make it happen themselves if they really want to work their butt off, maybe. And they're lucky, you gotta have some luck. I kid you not, you gotta have some luck. <laughs> <laughs> Although Lucas Oil has become a global powerhouse, Forrest remembers where he came from. And his favorite place to relax and get away from it all is on his cattle ranch in Cross Timbers, Missouri. When I was young, I promised myself if I ever got a chance to come back in the cattle business, I would and do it my own way. I had had Charlotte looking on the internet about ranch land. We hopped in the car and took off, went to Oklahoma and Kansas, and this place in Missouri kept popping up. So. We went to this place in Missouri and fell in love with it. His biggest contribution to preserving the rural way of life started in 2011 when he founded Protect the Harvest, a nonprofit organization that informs and educates the public on the organized agendas of animal and environmental extremist groups. You want to be a vegan? The people who are against us here are vegans. They want to do away with all animals. This thing started, I watched, it, I watched this happen in Europe. In England, we have an office there. I've been back there and saw it. In Northern England used to be full of small farms. Kind of like when I was a kid here in Indiana. You know, a cow and a sow and some chickens in the garden. Well, that's all gone now. And instead of having a big community, of, they're all gone. Because they have, you're not allowed to use GMOs. Because they, they're trying to say GMOs are poisonous. Well, they got a, a lot of people in the world believing that. There are people starving to death, and we got GMO food grains that they could use, but they won't because they've been convinced by these crooks. I designed the logo. This is made after Lucas Oil wrote, 
you know, the form of it, and protect the harvest name. Uh, had to come up with all this stuff. Uh, uh, the cat and dog. I was in California at the time. I had to find them. And the horse pictures. This is a California. They have a lot of these cows right here. They're great milkers. Or you have a lot of cream. Number one dairy state. A lot of people don't know that. California. Yeah, that's <laughs> where uh, in Jersey's. Uh, you get in Northern California, you don't see nothing but Jersey's. Uh, but yeah, the horse, the, the, the chicken, and the pig. These are all pictures, a lot of just pictures that the girls picked out. I had the, I had the girls in the office help me design all this, you know. But, you know, this, uh, yeah. This is where you go for more information. Mm -hmm. Throughout his career, Forrest has been honored countless times for his work in philanthropy and his contributions to the state of Indiana. Well, this is about the, the biggest award you can get in the state of Indiana. The state of Indiana. I've got one of these already. Most people only have one, but somehow or another, I ended up two. Pence gave me one. I had one. I forget who gave me the other one. But uh, it's a big deal. I got one hanging up in my office in uh, southern Cal southern Indiana, Cordon, Indiana. And most people come in, they don't even know what the heck it is. But I'm sure there'll be a lot of people here in Indianapolis who know what it is, because the Sagamore Award is the best award you can get from anybody in the state of Indiana. And that has to come from the governor. Huh? Has to come from the governor. And you've got two. Two. You know what I love when I look at this property is knowing that the money that you have made in your career has come from helping people get longer lives out of their engines. Instead of having to go out and buy a brand new car or even a used car, you're getting them longer lives. That's what this came from. Doesn't that feel good? No, it's not just engines. We make a lot more stuff than you probably think, but one of the biggest money savers to me is automatic transmissions. Those are really expensive. And I was reading a couple of years ago in the paper where somebody said, it usually costs on the average of $3,000 overhaul in automatic transmission. And the average family in the country, the whole family together cannot come up with $3,000. So if you can go out there for 15 or 20 bucks and fix it, which you can, but if you put it in there to start with, it won't wear out to start with. But even if you catch it, you don't wait too long, put it in there, it'll bring it back to life. Then you go and drive it for what, however long. Anyone ever try to get the patent on what you were doing? Oh yeah, not lately, but when we first started, yeah, a lot of people tried to. Thank God they didn't. Yeah. Think of all the people that you've uh, helped. Yeah, yeah. And we fix your power steering unit too, the same way. So, just for 15 bucks or something like that, you know, if you go to the auto parts store and buy it, you can fix your power steering unit. So, and then we get the fuel treatment. That's one of our biggest sellers. All these emissions you're worried about right now, put that in there and the emission goes away and your fuel mileage comes up. Yeah. As Forrest reflects on his life and his rigorous climb from poverty to the top of the financial ladder, he recognizes that his ambition and fierce follow through determination came from his origins. And he wouldn't be who he is today if he wasn't who he was back then. You wouldn't be who you are if you didn't have the childhood that you had. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I could, I could live through a lot of stuff that other people couldn't live through. I was used to it. I could go for days without sleep. I could. I did a lot of time. After seeing the success of his adult son and the pain he caused his family, Forrest's father, Raymond Lucas, eventually overcame his alcohol addiction. He gave his life to Christ and stayed sober until the day he died. He spent the rest of his life trying to make it up to us. So you went from working hard on the farm to getting a truck, to a fleet of trucks, to this beautiful factory where everything is custom made where we're sitting today. When you look at your legacy so far, what are you most proud of? Uh, most proud of, of this product right here because it's gonna save the world 
billions of dollars in repairs. And a lot of people can't afford those repairs. And we're just getting a really good start because we still got a lot of room to grow. When you look at the pictures of yourself as a kid, and there's a lot of kids out there in rural America right now who are running around barefoot, living you know, in the country away from the city, having to travel long distances. What's your message to them? Well, I think in a way it's good for them because they're going to learn to work, which is very important because a lot of these kids, they grow up in the city, they never worked, and they, and they come work and they don't know what to do, how to do it. They don't know how to bring, change spark plugs. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's a necessity. You know, you got to bear in mind, we're in the United States. There's lots of countries out here where people are really poor. So we got it a lot better than most people do. Even if you have to work some, work your butt off, uh, I think it's, in a way it's good for you. You know, you learn, you learn a lot when you're working. You know, you don't have to go to college. You can learn a lot just working. And you never went to college? No. I got the School of Hard Knocks is what I went to. <laughs> but I got a better education than anybody I know. And as you've hired, I mean, that's probably helped you hire some good people who maybe wouldn't have had a chance because they didn't have the educational background that some companies are looking for. You just know how to spot good people. Right. The uh, chemist is about the only one that I know of that has to have a, a, an education. We are Lucas Oil. 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 What I love most about this company is the people. We There's a feeling of belonging. Um, we're one big happy family and it just comes by naturally. Uh, what I love most about the company is, or are the people, um, everybody I've gotten to meet and work with over the years, uh, that's my favorite part. What I love most about working for Lucas Oil, I would have to say the personal relationships that Boris, Charlotte, Morgan, and Katie feel with their employees outside of work. It makes you feel more like family instead of just an employee. I love my job and what I do. I love working for Lucas Oil because they have given me so many great opportunities to meet all kinds of wonderful people, organizations, non-for-profits, um, and just places, visiting places. So opportunities is what I really, really like about Lucas Oil. It is an environment that fosters ideas and anyone at the company can always bring great ideas to the table and it's heard, and if it makes sense, it can come to fruition. And that's a pretty neat opportunity um, and something great to be a part of. And with that said, uh, the word that describes Lucas Oil for us is opportunity. One word to describe the company, over the last year I would say flexible. Uh, respect, respect is that word. And I think the reason I chose respect is because um, not only is it we respect Force and Charlotte, but they show us respect, we all respect one another, but we have a tremendous amount of respect that we get out on the road, our trucks, the way they look, the way our drivers act, uh, we're a respectable company. We have, we get a tremendous amount of respect from our customers and our product is respected in the industry. One word can't do it. Um, it's two words for me. It's life changing. I can think of one word to describe Lucas Oil, it'd be unstoppable. If I had to describe it in one word, I'd choose family. If I could only use one word to describe Lucas Oil, trust it. Lucas Oil, the company that Forrest founded at age 47, is now the market leader in oil additives. And it's still family owned and operated today. Are you happy you've been able to give them more? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I sure am, of course. So, but I don't know if they, appreciative of it as they maybe should be, but they don't know what I've just been telling you the last few minutes. For Forrest, family comes first, and Lucas Oil will remain a family business, as his son Morgan is being groomed to lead. Well, he's been special all his life. He's a 
close to being like me as anybody I could ever get. And he's taken over my job, a uh, little at a time as he learns. And he's got his beautiful wife that he's also got a real good business head. And uh, the two of them together, is, they couldn't ask for anything any better than that. And uh, they're both really good looking, really nice people. So I was really lucky there. When you take a look at where you started and you see all this product in front of you, in just one picture, this is just one picture. I mean, look at your accomplishments. You're here with your son. How, yeah. how does it feel to look at what you built? Well, it really feels good. The three rules are, you don't lie to anybody. You don't steal from anybody. And it doesn't cost anything to be nice to somebody. I always be polite. Those three things right there, if you live by that, you're going to live a pretty good life. You're going to be a pretty good person. So that's something I live by.